ukimwi amen ni nataka kwanza ya pamoja then we introduce the virtual prayer mama of god we shall do our few leaders then we shall well asha in with the man of god to continue bwana asante sana so kindly and we we'll give us a few people just to wave and we start off the meeting i know we may say that two and start four but i hope you be patient enough we shall we shall we shall have a nice time in the eyes of god how do you want to put the chair just to say hi and a few leaders then we shall usher in pastor zach to introduce the apostle of god amen
January of Buya, November, marriage one month, three children, and we are waiting upon the other blessings. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Apostle. This is the team we do, we do work together. I'm called Dr. Joel Oktoi Waswa. Together with my, my wife, Mr. Ram, she has gone to attend some meeting. She, she, she just going to be a short week. We do serve under Pastor Zadkuya in charge of the youth. These people are good people. I know we shall be blessed by your message. Kwa katu wacha tuweke mikono pamoja tukamkaribisha pastor za huyu ni the man of God. Thank you. Thank you. Allow me to take this moment to ask to bring forth the apostle to us. As I said, I met apostle when I was around 18 years of age. Uh, it's been a long time. He taught me youthful state is the foundational state. You miss it, you miss the next 50 years. Today is here. Today is here. Permit uh, me to bring the folks to the place. Apostle, we don't bring it. That is due to our generation. Robert Kennedy is the first. There is people at all to speak to a family. There is people to a young man to speak to 20 and 30. If you, I see 10 generations to come with Jesus Christ. What am I supposed to do? Thank you. Thank you for your time. Welcome to the house. Thank you. 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 Will you still get blessed? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm Peter Kek. I was born in a village in Syria. My father married seven wives. My mother was wife number two. And my mother had 14 children. I'm child number seven. Our 14th born is in Kakamega, is a pastor. I grew up in a lot of poverty. My father was a rich man, but he wasn't educated. He couldn't. He wasn't literate. He couldn't read or write. But he had a lot of wealth because he worked with the Muslims who were around during independence. And when they left, they trained him so many things. He was a mechanic. He had a garage. He had a petrol station. He had eight luxury cars, he had plots, land, he had homes. But because he was illiterate, he teamed up with a cousin of his who swindled all his wealth. But uh, by the time I was being born, I found him with very little of what was left. When I was joining primary school, he took us, about five boys, to go and stay with him in Seattle town from the village because he believed that boys should not stay with their mother if they do, they will be stupid. Of the boys in the house, I was the youngest. I learned how to cook ugali in class three. I learned how to iron my clothes and fold them in class four. I was walking five kilometers to school on foot and five kilometers back. I didn't take lunch most of the days. When I finished school, I had a B. I was called to Sabamba High School. My father couldn't pay fees. I joined for one, went to school called Boros Country School in Central Aleppo. I joined for one a day to after. The school fees for the whole year was 1457. The seven of was for school ID. My father did have it. He took me to school and he handed it and talked to the teacher. 
For one, I was a day scholar, I had a bicycle, I was cycling from Sayre Town to Borough School and back. For those of you who know, it's eight kilometers. One day, my bicycle was stolen, so I began to walk. By the end of one, my father rented me a house whose rent was 60 shillings. He couldn't pay rent, so I was evicted, and he took me to his garage. He was a mechanic and made me a watchman. So the whole of from two, from three, from four, I was a watchman at night and a school within the day, walking eight kilometers to school. I didn't have lunch. I barely ate dinner. Breakfast was never there. I served my father as his watchman, and I went to school. Many times I would be sent home for school fees and I would stay for weeks. By the time I got back to school, there's too much else to write, you don't even have time for it. I finished from four. I passed very well. I was to join university. Before I could join, those are days of university forms will come through Posta. You get them, you fill them, you return them. Before I could do anything with my forms, I had the gospel and I got saved. I got sent to the crusade and followed the pastor to his house. And I've never come back. I have been a preacher all my life. When I was in school, I wanted to be a high court judge. I said, when I'm 25, I'll buy a big car, buy a big wife, have a big house, and everything in this day. When I was 25, I was so beautiful girl and I wanted to marry her. I didn't have the money and I wasn't the judge for the reasons you know. I was a preacher. Preaching was very hard those days. There wasn't money. I was suffering, I was struggling, there was no food. But I wanted to marry because I said to myself when I'm 25, I should marry. So I talked to this beautiful, nice Kikuyu girl. She was a powerful evangelist. And those who are here, when was that one with? Yes, who was not here yesterday? You were not here yesterday. How many were not here yesterday? Put up here. No, uh, you need me to tell you. I, <laughs> I told the story for free yesterday. I can't do it for free again. <laughs> oh, sorry, what is it? I just don't know. You need to get it. <laughs> so I wanted to marry this girl because I said I'll have to marry at 25. So um, I asked to go and see her parents. Those days there were no forms, my friend. We are talking about mid 90s. There were no telephones. There. And even if you want to talk to somebody about the phone, you'd have to book a call, and then the time will come, then you go and talk. And then we had what is called Telegram. So we sent Telegram. Let's meet in Nairobi. And they were charged according to letters. So we went to Nairobi to pay dowry with one of the elders of our church, and uh, I paid dowry. And uh, 50,000 shillings was a lot of money those days, my friend. It was entire wealth I could ever put my hands on. And my wedding broke one week to the wedding. Why? One week to the wedding, a bishop friend of mine came across another wedding card inviting people to a wedding, and the girl is the same girl I was married. So, bishop called so that we go. Bishop is a friend of mine, he's based in Rebue, he's still in Rebue. So, I took a matatu to Rebue. And I met the bishop, and he gave me two wedding cards. He first started by giving me mine, and he asked me, what is that? I said, well, that's my wedding card, invited to a wedding. He said, look at it. I said, why should I look at it? It's, I'm the one who designed it. He said, look at it, read the names. I said, don't I know my name? Don't I know the names? Of he said, read her name. So I read her name, just to put the to rest. He said, are you clear you're ready to work? Okay. Check the address. I checked the address. Okay. Then he pulled another card. He said, look at this one. It was also a wedding invitation card. Another man and the names looked at the names of the girl I want to marry. Ah. I said, no, it cannot be names. You know, you can have, you can have Timothy and Timothy here. Philip, two Timothy and Is that not so? Yes, you can. So I still didn't want to believe 
He said, it's the same God. So two weddings are going to happen on the same day, same date, in different locations. One in Seah, another in Busia. One so beautiful girl. She was so beautiful, you think she was cut out of wood. So, <laughs> so Bishop told me, go get her. So I took a bus from Mujuya to Nairobi to go get my girl. Thank God I found her. And I asked her about the preparations of wedding. She said, everything is set. For hours and all hours. So I produced the two cards. I asked her to check it. She said, but that's the only card. I said, I know. Check it again. I said, but that's all. I said, read the names. So she did it. Then I gave her the second card. She collapsed. I told her, I'm waiting. I was waiting for her to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so she came back and we talked. When we started talking, she denied it. She said, no, 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 no. That is just a forgery. It cannot be. She's getting married to me. So I told her, if that be the case, then I'm going with you to Ebuya right now. So I took her and we went to Ebuya. Whatever happened in that bishop's house in Ebuya is story for another day. She almost killed him anyway, in short, for ruining her marriage. That was the last of it. In those days, there were no forms. So, how do you withdraw the cards? How do you cancel the invitations? We made our soups, we bought rice and the barley, and uh, we were ready. And that was it. That thing really devastated me. For four months, I couldn't talk, I couldn't preach, I couldn't pray. I was barely eating, I grew something, I had doubts with God. Because I was a pastor, I was doing well, I was praying, and I believed this is God. Well, two months later, she had a road accident, we went for the funeral, and I discovered that the names were not complete. I discovered that the man who took the dowry was not her father, who stayed money, she brought in a man to collect money for me. I discovered everything she told me about her age, and her family was fake. The truth came out in the road. As they said, that's life. Why am I telling you the story? I've not had a very nice youth for years. I've not had a comfortable one. I didn't enjoy much comfort, much love. I didn't enjoy much attention. I didn't grow up with my mother. I missed my mother a lot because I didn't grow up with her throughout primary school and high school and I was trying to connect to her during my time in ministry. And she didn't want me to be a preacher. She wanted me to go to university, make something of myself before I could become a preacher. But I could not because the call to me was so strong and I was encouraged to do that. I'm telling you this story to let you know that there are certain things we do as young people. And some of them do not end well with us. We do them because we think that's the time. We do them because we think uh, we are ready. We do them because we think we can handle them. We do them because we think uh, God is in them, but God is not in them. I want you to know that if you are you has been hard, mine was too. Telling the story to know that if you did grow up with both parents, I did too. I'm telling the story to let you know that sometimes things may look so hard when you're growing up, going to school, in college, university, and you may really suffer. You wonder whether you really want anybody. You will. Today, the founder and chairman of Pioneer Cosmic Ministries. We are an apostolic ministry in over 20 nations. In Africa alone, we have over 10 nations. In Pakistan alone, we've got over six apostolic schools. We are working with churches. We are establishing apostolic training centers. We are raising sons. We are training disciples. We are working with churches. We are working with the corporate world. We are doing courses for them on management and leadership. I'm good. I pay my bills. I'm not a rich guy, but I don't sleep hungry. My children don't miss food first. If I want to eat pork, I eat pork. If I want to take milk, I take milk. God has a way of turning things around for you. But uh, you must find him. Life is not easy. And some of you may be having very rich parents and you think that their wealth will cushion you. Maybe. Maybe not. I was reading a story about Jackie Chan. Well, those of you who love Kung Fu movies, I love action movies. Yeah, you, I watch them. When I'm stressed, I watch an action movie. 
I'm going to say something with me, just put down, beat and that <laughs> And knock some sense in him and beat the head out of him. <laughs> Jackie Chan has a son. How many? Jackie Chan is worth over 700 million US dollars. His measure. He said when he dies, all his wealth will go to charity. His son will be given a dime. Why? That's the question you're asking us. Why would a multi-millionaire like Jackie Chan with over 700 million and then say when the army only one son who is also an actor trying to do something action movies not very successful? Why would Jackie Chan deny his only son inherited? Why would you have a father who is worth over 700 million dollars, no pensions, and he tells you you will get zero from it? Fathers have good reasons. Some of you people don't understand. Fathers are choosing. I remember my father, he had many children. In my mother's house alone, we were 14. My elder brother, the one I follow same, wasn't a good young boy. He was troublesome, he disturbed my father. My father couldn't send him and he would go. He would sell anything in the compound and waste it on cars. He didn't want to go to school. My father lost all wealth because of not going to school. He would kill you if you would go to school. I became a student because I wanted to go to school. In plus three, I was already saving little coins to buy Sunday newspaper. Because there was a, a columnist in Sunday Nation called Mutai Guru, Mutai Wabunme, Mutai Wabunme, Mutai. He would write a Sunday column called The Whispers. That's what I feel like. I would pick newspapers on the road, pieces of newspaper, and read. I was in class four, and I was with my mother in class seven with this grammar. I was making this composition in that I was in class four, I was in class seven. I loved school. But sometimes things don't work out for you exactly the way you want. Sometimes some of you, you will not end up doing what you are studying. Then the course you are taking is not a hundred percent guarantee of the career you will have in life. It may be equivalent. You know, because the dynamics of life keep changing. And in each and every one of us, there is something major and there is something minor. You've got major gifts and minor gifts. And sometimes it's your minor gift that will open doors for you and employ you when you use your major gift as a hobby. And so, I'm telling you all these things because I want you to be open-minded. And I want you to know that you need to honor your values. Take a chance, son, is rebellious. He's proud, he doesn't listen to his father. He's with drugs. His father always has to go to the police to bail him out. He doesn't listen, he works in bad company. And Jeff Jeff said, when I die, all my wealth goes to a charity home. My father said of that brother of mine, I will never give you that. He died before my father. Listen to your parents. Sometimes you come to school and then you get too much pressure and exposure. You start picking bad habits that you never got from home. Start doing things and working with people that your parents would never want you to. That is foundation. I want you to get that into your head. Now, to my father right class, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 1. Everybody should know this. Don't you? Yes. To everything there is what? And the time for every purpose under heaven. Under the sun. I want to talk about four words today. Because there's a season to everything and a time to every purpose under the heaven. I'm talking about four things. One, priorities. Two, focus. Three, determination. And four, patience. Priorities. Focus. Determination. Patience. Priorities. The reason I wanted to marry that girl at 25 is because I said to myself, I will marry at what age? So it's so easy to be carried astray because you've made yourself vulnerable. It's like a girl saying, This year I must be married. You will get married, I'm telling you, for sure. 
but you take this bone face, all the fairness is a buffer. Be because you've made yourself vulnerable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a certain lady in Mombasa. She's a Taita lady. She's Taita too. She's quite like her. <laughs> She's very wealthy. She drives a nice Missouri extra sport. She's got money. She's got things. She's got her husband. But she looks up to me for direction. So she said, Apostle, me, I'm ready for marriage. I'm ready for marriage now, today. It's torment. I want to be married today, now, torment. I said, you can. You will. Men are found. But you will not get the right man. You will walk in and walk out. And you know, this generation is living at a time watching too many movies and seeing people walking out of marriages feeling nothing, shameless. You think our mothers endured our fathers because our fathers were the best husbands? No. But there was a value the put of the institution of marriage. Am I encouraging dying in a, an abusive marriage? No. But I'm saying that the reasons ladies give today for walking out of a marriage are flimsy, do not hold water, are hollow, and are stupid. I love football too. There's a player for Barcelona called Piquet. How many know him? Ah, thank you. I'm not so in the house. <laughs> he married the famous Somba. What's her name? Shakira. Shakira left him. You know where? You know why? She wants to stay in the US to further her career, but Piquet cannot leave Barcelona because he's playing for Barcelona. So, you go, I go. Oh, what reasons do women have this place? She wants to further her career in the US. So my career comes first. Marriage comes last. If you're not leaving Barcelona to follow me to the US, you stay. I'm moving with our son. So she moves with her son to the US to further her career and Piquet remains in Barcelona because that's what gives him the bread. And I talk this in adults' meetings when I'm talking to couples or men or women. A woman should never ask a man to choose between family and work. Because a man cannot choose between family and work. A man will choose work and family. We can choose either. Don't put that on us. It won't work. It will be fine. A man cannot choose family or work. He will choose work and he will choose family. Because a man must work to look after his family. So Shakira puts together in a hot seat. Decide whether it is family or you are forgetting that herself she has chosen what? Career of her family. So the man is supposed to compromise. And the man says, no, I'm not leaving Barcelona anytime now. Okay, so what? So the family falls apart. You, you are growing at a generation where the institution of marriage is not honored. And some of you may be sitting here and you don't even think you'll get married. Married. You don't even think it's a big deal. You don't even care. And, and he said, must I be married? I'd rather be single and happy. This, this thing girls call my happiness. What does it mean? I don't say anything talk about it. I'm not saying it in a bad way. I don't say you say it, but I don't understand it. Okay, it's my happiness that comes first. You know, what do you think happiness is? Yeah. If it doesn't make me happy, I just walk out. And, and, and you know, uh, friends, I just wanted you to know that we broke up with the jaw. And, and we broke up with the jaw because I wasn't happy with him. Yeah. And, and, I, and now we are out with the jolly, and he makes me happy. Whatever that is me with this happy thing, I don't know. <laughs> but our mothers were not always laughing when they stayed in our fathers. But they decided to put up with a few excesses in our fathers if it was not going to kill them. To provide an environment for us to become who we are today. Some men are bitter today against their fathers. Because of that, they saw how their fathers were treating their mothers. It's affecting you in school, it's affecting you in college, it's affecting you in the workplace. It's affecting how you're relating with your girlfriend and with your wife. Priorities. Priorities is the difference between how many and which one? There is what is called counting. Counting gives you how many? Some total.
But then there's what's called numbering. Numbering gives you the priority. So God said to Abraham, what did he say? He brought him outside and said, we are Genesis 15, verse number 5. Look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. Count the stars if you are able to number them. Count, number. Counting you can begin anywhere. If you tell me to count how many is it here, I can begin anywhere. I can begin here or there or there. Provided I get the sum total correct. Counting gives you the quantity. How much? How many? But numbering gives you the order of priority. Which one takes number one spot? As an individual, you must have both lists. A list of your counting and a list of your numbering. As a young man, I have my list. I want to be a high court judge. I want to buy a big wife, buy a big car, buy a big house. That is counting. Now, numbering. Which one comes first? And if you are going to get our properties right, we must realize, like in the domino effect, which you understand, the first card falls, falls on the second, which knocks the third, knocks the fourth, the fifth, and all of them fall. You just knock one card, and all the cards will fall to the last one. That is how we do our priorities. So that if the first one is accomplished, it provides the energy, the financing, the resourcing, the whatever it takes to do number two. And when number two is done, it provides whatever it takes to do number three. So that you don't do number one, do number two, and number two does not get help from number one. When you're doing number two, it's like you're beginning the same day, the same way you're beginning number one. And when you're doing number three, you're beginning just like you're beginning number two, and you're be no, you don't do that. That means you are poor in numbering. You should have written them in such a way that when this is accomplished, it provides energy, it provides financing, it provides strength, it provides a support to this one. So that it is easy to do number two than what it took you to do number one. And when number two is done, number three will be easier to accomplish than number two because it is receiving double energy from number one, number two. Amen. How are your priorities in life? What takes the first spot? Does it have the energy, the capacity, the propensity to cause number two? Can it start number two? When it's been accomplished, does this happen? Priorities. The problem with the young man today is lack of priorities. The young man is an ambitious person, and ambition is not bad. But if ambition is not controlled by proper, sober numbering, you make mistakes that you could afford. My sister, who follows me, got married when she was in class four as a second wife. Her children, she follows me, her children, three of them have already done university. One of them, who is in university, second year, took her money and married with it. He's got a wife now. You are a second year. You've married a girl. Who is in the third, who is in the third year? Don't you think the girl is enjoying it? <laughs> <laughs> she will leave the poor boy there, still going to school. She knows what she's doing. She's found free money, free sex, free house, free pocket money, free food. Priorities. I called the young man when his, his mother told me that he married. I called him. He didn't pick my calls. He knows what I was going to tell him. I will get him. I will find out where they close. I will go get him in the village. I will pull his ear and that stupid girl and put them down. And ask them to tell me what they are doing. Don't get into marriage if it's not a priority. The question is, what energy is that marriage you have? What resourced it? What was the first thing that resourced it? You can barely live on your own. Without pocket money, you are doomed and down. Probably you don't even have a house of your own at home. You live in your friends' houses or your grandmother's grandmother's house, which is standing like this, waiting for thunder to fall. <laughs> you drag along a woman who has got a thousand needs in one day. You're really growing gray hair and you're in second year. 
How would you look at it when you reach my age? It's in the top or Mohammed's? Promises. Our first daughter who finished school, who is a lawyer, when she was in school, she was at Fuera, Catholic University of Eastern Africa. She said, Dad, do you know the kind of cars that come here to pick cars? I said, I don't know. She said, Dad, they are fat ones. I said, as fat as my no, Dad, your car is not fat. They are not fat in a cars. You know the cars that, that turn in a circle when they want to make a corner. I said, yes, I know them. They are called the TX, VA, Retrovision, those ones. I said, my daughter, why are you telling me this? Just tell her, I want to tell you what's going on here. I said, my daughter, please don't follow the lessons up. She said, Dad, I can't. I remember everything you told me. I have my priorities right. She told her mother she would not have a boyfriend until she has finished university. She kept her work. Through university without a boyfriend. Through university without a boyfriend. Not all the time did we have the money to give her. Not all the time did we have the money to give her. Sometimes you'll tell her you will sleep under tonight because your gas is out and I don't have money now. You will wait until tomorrow. And she will wait. And sometimes I will sneak to go visit her because I know how apartment. I'm not paying rent. <laughs> I can't pay rent for you, I don't know where you stay. Eh? <laughs> I not in <laughs> In the middle of the night. Okay. Who is that? I said, it is me, your father. Oh, nah, nah. She opens the door quickly. She jumps on me and hugs me and kisses me. I say, hey, 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 where are you so happy? She said, Dad, you don't want to come. It's too good to see you. Hey, how have you been? I heard that you were in, 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 in this place. Uh -huh, and you didn't even tell me. What did you bring me back? We are talking, we are having stories. And she says, come, let me show you something. And she takes me to a bedroom and, and pulls out something. I said, where did you get this one from? I said, that it's not what you're thinking. Ah, mom gave it to me and she told me not to tell you. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pocket a whole world of notes and give her, say, go to shopping, buy clothes, buy shoes, with your hair, do your nails. Smell nice to her. I'm going back. Oh, Dad, can I wait for you? No, I'm not taking tea. I'm going back. Now go back to my house. Because she ran out of gas for two days, so we could put her gas. So I want to see which boy it is at the moment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If your parent poked in at your door, Tonight. <laughs> you are, are having to leave your chair. You can get your heart on your head. energy to take it small. Don't start off. Because love can be extremely powerful. My friend, you don't even know how the clothes went down. You can't even explain. They just disappeared from your body. You don't even know you can explain. When someone at a minute shook a tune was one with the when he shook a phone shook a man, when you shook there are things you don't start then if you can't take them easy. And don't play with the fire. It will burn you. It will burn you. Life is hard enough as it is. Don't make it hard. Yeah. Correct? Things are hard enough as it is. So it, she said, she said, she said to her mother, I don't want to have a boyfriend until I've finished university. So she finished university and her mother started having worries. But it is now free to have a boyfriend. I said, so what? Why are you panicking? She said, but I'm not ready to become a grandmother. I said, woman, wake up. No. <laughs> She has not forgiven me up to date because I said she's old. <laughs> she has not forgiven me, for sure. I hope you are not recording this. She not watching. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you're old. Wait, accept it. There are children now start coming. 
that you got me out. <laughs> what are your priorities? What are you giving first priority? Say, Lord, you help me with this one. It will supply energy. Because in my counting, I have four. In my numbering, I have this as number one. This as number two. This as number three. And this as number four. Sometimes we blame the devil for our own failure to plan our lives. And some of you are coming from backgrounds that the best your father can give you is good face. Joseph has left. That's how Joseph the first artist. In his days at Masinomunio, there was a girl who was sleeping in the boy's hostel. And she slept, she slept there until she finished, and she never had sex with the man. Because she approached them and talked to them. And said, no one is going to touch me, but I need accommodation, and all the girls are not accommodating me, and I've got no way out. I left a grandmother at home who can't do anything, and I need to go to school. And nobody's going to touch me, but I want to sleep. And the boys agreed. And, and she, she, she was sleeping in the boys' hostel privately. Nobody was supposed to know that because it's against the school rules. Yeah. And she finished. I knew about it. And I prayed that she never gets caught. Mm. If I had money, I would have rented for her space. Mm. I didn't have it. I could have taken her into our home. That was not going to happen. So, what are your promises? You know, you may think you're having fun, and fun is having you. <laughs> so, you know, the summer will turn on One day you try picking up, you feel your knees are vibrating. What's wrong to you? You're no longer young, my friend. Things have changed. All the young men who are dying to take a turn for longer no longer care. You are number 10. <laughs> you are the one that is off to when they are frustrated. There's no one coming. Then they will show you a thousand sweet words. What I was saying, oh. No, you are number 10. The nine failing is coming to you. Next week is back to the number one, or two, three, or four. Boys are buying medicines here, treating um, candidiasis, gas, treating candidiasis, treating uh, syphilis, treating gonorrhea, treating AIDS. People are sick here. It is, it is cosmetic covering first, you see. Yeah. And those boys don't care because they've given up. Some of them have been read by uh, right, uh, what do you call it? The, the, the right acts have been read for them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they don't care. And ladies, your lives are very vulnerable. Your lives are so vulnerable. You add weight easily. You, 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 you grow a big baby when you get a baby. The man is still the same slim man every day. You've got a big stomach, he's still the same slim slim man. He, he pumps you, he remains the same. You are out of school, he is in school. You've got your parents to deal with, he's got nobody to deal with. Was I alone? Huh? You're going to tell me. Hey, what's it, Jerry? And I've got the pattern on the stars for me. Blue, red, yellow, green, and others twinkling like this. You can't go home. You are dropping out mainstream. Home is poor and horrible and horrendous. What are you going to do with your life? What are your priorities? I'm not here to judge you, I'm just asking some questions. Have your priorities right. Whether you're coming from a rich background or a poor background. Have your priorities right. Number two, focus. Look at how the lions hunt. The lions look at a group of gazelles, or deers, or buffaloes, or antelopes. They circle them. They pick one. The other side stars the herd of deers. They start running in every direction. The lions of this side pick one. Don't you watch that geo? They pick one out of those gazelles. And they, the others are passing here, they don't care. They, they pick one. 
The other five don't follow him down here. They don't take. They want that fat one. They are monitored it and watch that if their eyes narrowed, turned into brown, turned into dark red. They're looking at it and imagining how it's chewy and nice and you know, you know. They, they are seeing how they're going to enjoy the big thighs and the big legs. The other team starts them. They go for it, my friend. My friend, they chase it to the end of the app until the minute hour. So they focus. Life will always present you with a thousand distractions. So stop it. It will depend on the muscle of your focus to overcome the hurdles that life throws at you. Maintain your focus because you have a priority. You overcome hurdles, peer pressure, changing the circumstances of life, problems at home. Some of you are here and your parents are going through a divorce and you are hurting because you are being torn between going with your father or going with your mother, loving your mother more than loving your father or loving your father, and this one is feeling with the poison against this one, and this one is feeling with the poison against this one, and you are trying to concentrate and things are not working. Some of you have been through trauma. Something happened, probably a defiant by, by somebody, and you can't talk about it. It's affecting your focus and concentration. If you're going through such things, you need to seek more help. You need to seek more help. Focus. What is your focus? You are reading a book and your friend comes, hey Jeff, uh, uh, no, you, you, you know Jeff, there's this party in town. You will not believe it. You will not believe it's the party of parties. You then you can't miss this one. In fact, I have a for you. I have shoes for you. Really? Do you? Yes, I do. You do? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm coming. You put your boot, get out. You are putting on your shoes, jumping on one leg, getting out of the house. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> You've got no focus on life. Anybody can dump their parties on you and get away with it. You must have the mass of saying, oh, Jeff, I'm sorry. As great as the party may sound, I'm not available. I'm busy. What do you think I'm reading? What do you think? A storybook. You can't put down the storybook? No, I can't. Why? Because you found me reading it. You prefer a storybook of a party? Oh, yes, I do. You heard my friend. I'm sorry. Focus. Can you be for him? Let's keep yourself busy with your priorities. Somebody said, don't wish for anything. Work for what you wish for. I believe in working now. I grew up in immense, terrible poverty. My mother could take, brought in the baby, and maybe it's going to pour out, wash it, boil it, and give it to us to eat. We could cook with that like this, there's no stew. And we eat it that way. <coughs> and then my father would rise to come with them at home and he would want us to cut Smoriki into four pieces. They would be big like elephant ears. We are eating big leaves of Smoriki. We, we grew up in abject poverty. We were so poor, so poor. He lost all his cars, he lost all his work. He became a poor man who was riding a bicycle, but the bicycle also got stolen. I was walking blood to school eight kilometers in four months. The sole of the shoes is one off. The sole of the socks is one off too. I'm stepping down on the sole of my foot. Blood school. On top, the socks is pulled up to here. We didn't have trousers like I see these days. Our high school, we had stockings. We pulled them up to the knee. But so poor. There was no lunch. There was no breakfast. Dinner was probable. Life was up. The garret where I was a mechanic, there was no electricity. But that just got out of electricity, so we cross the fence and use the security light to do to study, read for more, to do graph work. One time I did graph work using moonlight. 
I was waiting for KCSE, sitting on a stone outside a shop, reducing security light, reading for KCSE, and I still got a B. I show my children my KCC results every day. And I told them, I've taken you to the best schools available. You drive in the Mercedes Benz going to school. And you can fail. You cannot fail. Thank God. God has helped me. Because they will break my heart if they will fail. What are your priorities? What is your focus? I was in a funeral. Not exactly a funeral, but uh, it was a function, but somebody had daddy. So the pastor of someone say, shall we all stand and keep silent for a minute in honor of the dead? You know that observance of silence? So we all stood, but then there was a huge clock behind us. And I couldn't hear the noise. Dick, dick. But I said, why are we not told to stop? <laughs> Why is somebody making noise? We were told we are honoring the dead for crying out loud. You don't dishonor the dead. So after I saw that look, it was not somebody doing something. It was the clock. My friend, time will never stop even when we are honoring the dead. <laughs> Keeps moving. Whether you're succeeding or failing, time is moving. Whether you're laughing or crying, time is moving. Whether you're reading or sleeping, time is moving. Whether you're with your God's land or you are not with your God's land, time is moving. And one day, it will show you I've been counting. Please, my sister, my brother, there is a time for everyone. There's a time for sex. And you can enjoy it without sin. Because you enjoy it with your husband or wife. You don't have to steal it. You may think that thing is going nowhere. It's waiting for the right time. Have your priorities. Know the things that are most important. The things you give preeminence. Don't misjudge when you can make it. Don't. I'm telling you. Because in the beginning, God. Allow God to initiate your processes and your pursuits. Let God have preeminence in your life. Let your friends know you love God and you love Jesus. Don't go around the bush when it comes to matters of God. Because he is the author of everything. When the Bible calls him in Isaiah 96, the Prince of Peace, the word Prince there does not mean man or father. The word Prince there is the word for author, pioneer, source, order. He's the Prince of Life. He's the author of life. He's the beginning of life. He's the giver of life. He's the source of life. He wakes up in the morning. So give your priority in your life. Love with all of your heart. Ask him to guide you every day in pursuit of your priorities. Ask him to help you make the right choices in life. Because it's easy to make a mistake, but it's not easy to correct certain mistakes. And some mistakes hurt so deeply. They hurt you so deeply, they hurt you for so long. Because you wish you would turn back the hand of time, and you can't. And you wish you could have just waited a little bit more, but now you cannot. It's all wishes. And your life begins to disintegrate because you're living regrets and you're losing hope and you're losing the joy of life and you begin to think about things. Priorities. What are your priorities? And number two, what is your focus? What is your priorities focus on? When the raindrops fall from the roof on that veranda there, on day one you can go and mop it away. Nothing has happened to the floor. Concrete floor, but it keeps on dropping there, and after a year, you find holes punctured on the ground. Because the rain never lost that focus. I didn't see the first today, but I'll try again tomorrow. I'll keep on trying. What was the third one? Press the 
Once you are determined, you have got a resolve. You have resolved to, to do something. You are organizing your energy and channeling it in a certain way. When I was in high school, I took karate lessons. So I could use them to kill my uncle. This uncle of mine was not a good man. He is the brother to my father. And he almost killed me when I was in class 8. For no good reason. I don't have time to explain the whole story. But he beat me up so badly that he broke my arm. My arms are not the same length. And this elbow is sharper than this one. This bone did not come back properly. My mom almost killed me. I was hospitalized for days. My mother nursed me at home, turning me around, helping me with going to the toilet for one month. I got up, and in the next two weeks, we we're beginning KCPE. And I swore I would keep this all in my body. So after KCPE, I got to form one, and we were told, little orientation, you can choose clubs. I was checking the list. Where is a club which can help me kill someone? <laughs> And I saw Karate Club, I said, that's what we do. I told you, why am I bringing the story? During our Karate lessons, we were taught how to channel energy. That energy flows through your whole body. That's why you can stand on one leg, and you can stand on both legs. It's the balance of energy. They call it Qi in China. How you can channel it and use a fist to break a wall. And the mom of Karate says, you dry, you crack your knuckles, or break this joint, or break this. But there's a way in which you organize all your energy to flow through your body. It doesn't stop here, it doesn't stop. It flows up to here, and it goes through the wall. It breaks that. That's why men should not beat women. Because man was built with steel. You will kill a woman, and you'll be in prison for life. If you don't like her, let her go. If she's beating you, run away. That's how she shows her frustration. You run. Don't fight her, she's not a man. She can't fight you. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Women get angry and they start scratching your face. Yeah, just let her beat you, let her beat you, give her, let her beat you forever. Then she feels good, then you hug her, then you kiss her, then she feels good. <laughs> Don't fight a woman. You are a man. There's enough strength in a man. Too much to put on a woman. If you have a fight, go fight a war. Break it. Determination means you're not channeling the energy in you to succeed. So stop wasting your energy. You're channeling your mental energy, your emotional energy. You are channeling your physical energy and spiritual energy. You are organizing them so that they can flow through one pipe and break through to produce what you want. That's determination. When somebody is building a house, every time he is spending money, even if he is buying something for his wife, he said, hey, that's a lot of time if I've just wasted <laughs> yeah. You see, it, because all his energy is channeled into building. Okay? So even if he wants to, even if he like, I need to buy new shoes or something. No, no, my friend, that is seven bags of seven. No. <laughs> Oh, like that. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> My friends, I'm building right now, and I'm buying 200 properties, which is costing me 450,000. And I'm roofing second week of December. If you put together with the money of the timber and the food, it comes to one million. My friend said, hey, I don't pay me more than I want to pay, but here. Yes, you're getting a million, but you want to pay. All my energy is channeled where? Roofing. That's called determination. So sometimes your boyfriend is not stingy. His energy is going somewhere. 
possible to become what you want to be. It's possible to achieve the results you want at your workplace, at school, the grades, in the business. Determination. Be determined. A determined person organizes his energy into one direction. Stop wasting your energy on things that are not on your priority list. Stop. And last but not least, patience. Be patient with yourself. Don't push yourself too hard until you have a nervous system. Don't be a wreck. Tell Timothy T, you didn't get it today. Learn from the mistakes you made. Set your priorities right. Have a better focus. Be more determined. And give it your best shot. Tomorrow is another day. Stop living, blaming yourself, blaming your parents. No. According to the scriptures, those who love God, all things work together for good. Be patient with yourself. Patient allows for growth. Patience also gives you time to recoup your energy. The English say, a weak dog needs to fight another dog. Even in war, it's a tactical strategy. That when you realize the enemy is overwhelming you, you retreat. The enemy thinks you are defeated. No, you are making a tactical retreat so you can regroup, reorganize, re strategize, refuel, so that you can re attack, re launch. So, be patient with yourself. Don't let your mistakes go away after you've cried. Men beat the wall when they do regretful things and stupid things. Also, what was I thinking? They kick the wall, they kick doors, they beat doors, and they just pull their hair and scream. Call their friends and tell them how stupid they are. Men don't call their friends and tell them how stupid they are. Having done all that, reprioritize, refocus, be more determined and give yourself space and satisfaction. Some of you will get married at 20. Some at 22. Some will get married at 30. Some at 32 or 34, 35. Some will get married at the age of 40. Some will get married at 45. I'm just saying, I'm not, that's why I'm not looking at anybody specific, you know. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me look at me. No. Some get married at 35, 40, 45, even 60. I have a daughter, the lady who bought me my first car, Honda CRV, green car, used to call it the She was a Catholic sister. I picked her, she's a white lady from the US, New Jersey, New York, New Jersey. She left Catholic. She got born again. She got filled with the Holy Ghost. I disappointed her. She joined a good church. I don't live in the US, so I'm father of a good church. She became a minister. She became a reverend. She opened a church. One day she asked me, Dad, how old is it? She was 60. She asked me, Dad, uh, how do you travel around in Kenya? You keep on telling me with this. I said, I use buses. She said, you can't go anywhere by bus. Do you mean your buses? I said, some places you use bicycles or motorbikes. Motorcycles. She said, how much is a good used car? I said, I'll find out. So I talked to a few friends of mine whom I knew. They talked about an, an, an Italian in who was selling his car. And I came up and I told her. She said, the man, Papa, 
She was 60. When I first met her. She was 66. When she got her boyfriend. She got her boyfriend for the first time. So she calls me excited. You know who she was. Hey dad, you are not going to believe this. I said, I will. Tell me, what is it? So we were at this party, and this, this old man, nice dead man, he should be in his seventies, and he's sat across me at the table, and we began to talk while we were drinking and eating, and he smiled at me, and I smiled back, and he asked me if I'm married, and I said I'm not, and he asked me if I'll get married to him, and guess what? I said yes, and I said yes, my daughter. Apple. <laughs> I don't wish you that. Those are exceptional instances. But there are possible scenarios. This old man had been married three times before. Twice his wife died. The third time his wife left him. He's got grown up children. He is lonely. He needs company so they can sit around the fire, warm themselves as they read the Bible and laugh and cook their soup and eat. And he's found here a wonderful lady who loves the Lord, born again from the Holy Ghost, and still believing God for a loving husband. Here comes one, how faithful is God. He can bring a husband even in your 60s. My sister, you won't reach 60s before you get one. What I'm saying is, we will all get married at different times. So no pressure. Breathe easy. Okay? You are going to school, probably you're taking the same course in the same class, but some of you get jobs ahead of others. There's no curse on you. You don't need to come for deliverance. Just means that our times are different. So we wait for a while. Some will start with good jobs, some will start with bad jobs. But somewhere there, God knows how to bring the equalization. Things just happen. So be patient with yourself. If you end up doing the job which you do not study, be patient with yourself. Thank God. Listen to something like that. So what are the words? Number one? What is the priority? Class? What do you mean when you say priority? And not you, no. You, the Kitani, this for you, you don't answer. What does, what does it mean when you're not pilot? Why are you whispering? Who wants to tell me what a priority means? Yes, it is. So, which one is priority? How many or which one? That's the priority. Which one counts first? You must have that, okay? Which one counts first? I've got four. That is how many. But priority means which one counts first? And how do I set my priorities? Which? How do I know what should come first? How do I know what should come first? Yes, number eight, but how do you tell this of you take the ball? <laughs> yeah, you were just enjoying me, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you were just having fun, why well, don't you? Yes.
many of the instructions are good things that are not a priority. Yeah. For example, my sister gets married when she's in class four as a second wife. I'm in class six. By the time I'm in class eight, she's got about four children. By the time I'm finishing from four, she's got eight children. One day she wrote to me asking for school fees. I said, ah, 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 dada, to I just to change to school, you just get married. Kila mtu, akule ni You can't turn around now, you want my money. I, I knew I needed the money, that's why I was going to school. School was operating because I knew school will help me get money. Now you, you went to my, you went to the husband. Go to your husband to give me money. She doesn't ask me this anymore. I have that if I feel it. See that you like it? See, I'm not sure what. Who is to find the bad choices and then you bring your bad choices to your elder brother's love with money when I said it's a bit. You made your choices, it is your bed you made it. Why? If you don't want, start now. What are your priorities? Why do you give them priority? Because when they are fulfilled, they will supply the energy, the resources, the opportunity, the capital, the foundation, the backing for number two. And when number two is done, it supplies to this. So doing number two becomes easier than number one, and doing number three becomes easier than number one. <laughs> How much? <laughs> you know, this, this boy is joking with us. We will call off that wedding or we'll do a wedding of 10,000. Okay. What's the reason you do You can work. I told you, you enjoy your work. We can't carry 99.9% of your wedding budget and the wife is yours. What do you want I cannot even give her my daughter. Could a brother if I don't see your packet, see your music? I could make a dowry. Papa will be in the south of Chukam Shan, you can't tell the Chapupenda, the Kukataza, the Rokas, and the Chukam boy. On the wedding day, the brother was a pastor. We pastors, we are pastors ourselves. On the wedding day, the brothers of the girl came. They're just watching how gifts are coming. Cows, birds, mattresses, vehicle, vehicle. They carry everything. The man slept on a jerky day one with his bride. They said, but this one is okay now. We are helping ourselves. Yes. My friend, young man. And, and let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And you let me sleep with you. Let me talk to the ladies. Let me talk to the men in the hearing of the ladies. So I'm giving you a hint. At every stage of life, there's a beautiful girl. When you come to school, there was a beautiful girl. Yeah. <laughs> you don't miss the big girl at when she's going to the river. <laughs> when you went to high school, there was a beautiful girl. Not the one you pray with, another one. Now, this is high school. And you always hope that the next outing is going to her school. When you came to Marcelo, there is a beautiful girl here also. At every stage of life, there's a beautiful girl. It's so easy to break girls' hearts. So easy. You just drop the one of the former stage as you get the one of the new stage. Then you finish university, you get a scholarship. To Denmark. Yeah. Then you find a new Danish girl. With the legs, you think they are carved out of wood. There's a new level. There's another new beautiful girl. You know, there's the one you are walking around with here in Marcel. The one who was walking with her milk house. You love me. She found another one at the master's level in Denmark. And she tells you. My, I'm the only child of my father, and my father owns companies here, and I like you. Would you marry me, please? My friend, Chakra <laughs> Ramahanda. 
Now, why in my circle, who you get the bachelor to you? He said to me, Johnny, since you went to Denmark, you're not writing anymore, babe. What's going on? Are you okay? Um, uh, I'm just a little busy. I'll, I'll get back to you when I make time. Process, process. The, the problem here is so tight. No, this is so tight. That's the problem you are with me. You think this is Hallelujah. <laughs> Please underline that one. <laughs> underline it. Every man loves a certain stage in a woman. There is the, the wild, cheeky, naughty, jumpy, funny girl. There's a man who loves that. But that is a stage in your life. There's a man who loves. The calm, composed girl who, who, you know, and says, yeah, that girl can be a good girlfriend, but that is a stage of your life. So, this man want to marry a stage of your life. So, after some time, you shift from that stage. He says, Jen, why have you changed? But Jen doesn't understand, she has changed. Children don't know they're growing. It's us who watch them. Who see the growth? So be careful. Because you will not be interested for it. There's a time you are just introvert, indoors, quiet, less socializing. And there's a man who loves that. It's the stage. They are called the archetypes of femininity. If you pay me, I'll teach that one. Men, I beg you that you need to know that those, that woman you love is a stage of that woman. It will change. That actor will change. She will evolve into another woman. <coughs> she may always love long hair, then one day she does not love long hair. She cuts it all clean with a little bit. And then you say, what? But he said, but Johnny, it's still me. It's still me, me, me. No, it was not you, you, you. It was your hair. <laughs> That's why you should be careful before you make a decision. Because there are decisions that are made when you're very mature. So that she can keep oscillating from this act time to this act time. But you the one you remain still. Yes. Now that decision is not made when you are very young. Because youth explodes. Youth explodes. Have your priorities. Have focus. Have determination. And 
have let me try for hold the hand of the person next to you. After this, if you have a question, you can ask. Father, it is a blessing to be a youth. It's a blessing to be youthful. It's a blessing. It's a stage in life, a very active one, adventurous, explosive, exploring, discovering, venturing. I pray a blessing on these young people. The blessing I pray on them is the blessing that they will not miss the fullness of their youthfulness. They will maximize on it so that one day when they are not youth, they will not regret how they spent that time. This is the time to learn, to study, because their minds are fresh and able to absorb a lot. Help them for those who go to school with their studies. This is the time to acquire degrees as many as they want because they still don't have many responsibilities weighing on their shoulders. I pray that you help those who want to pursue their academics to their highest levels. This is the time to choose the path of their lives. This is the time to set their purposes right. I pray that they may seek guidance, they may seek the wisdom of godly counsel from wise men wise leaders to their patrons, their matrons, their pastors, to help them in setting their priorities. This is the time to have focus. In living in a world which is untreated with so many voices, so many activities. So many things are happening, each one of them wants a piece of their attention. Each one of them wants to be attended to by these people. They cannot be available for all these voices. They cannot, they cannot be available for all these activities. They cannot be available for all these happenings. Pray that they may remain focused. Living in a the world, they're seeing their peers, colleagues, <coughs> workmates, colleagues, friends, neighbors. Some of them seem to be doing much better than they are, and it makes them feel a little depressed, concerned. They wonder. Why is God taking too long to do certain things for them? But Lord, it's never late. Pray that they remain focused. They will never grow weary in waiting in you. They will always remain steadfast in faith, keeping hope alive. Knowing that God is faithful, that he that began a good work in them is faithful to finish it. I pray that they will have determination to remain focused and to achieve their priorities. Their bodies and lives are full of energies. They will organize these energies and channel them to hit the target, hit the goal, to achieve their priorities, to succeed in their focus. Pray that you guide them by the Spirit, the fear of God, with the love of God, and with good company of them. Help them choose friends carefully. Avoid having corruption in their lives for bad and corrupt good cause. Save them from that corruption. Let them remain focused, good, faithful, dependable people, God fearing, God loving, honest, righteous people, people who fear God, knowing that God is faithful and shall reward them. I pray that they be determined, that they not lose hope in anything. And if things don't happen exactly the way they wanted, let them stay determined to see those things happen. Because God you do not change. And some of us, things don't work out exactly the way we desired them at the beginning during our childhood dreams. But you never forsook us. You've been with us and helped us. You've kept us strong and blessed our hearts and taken us forward. And we're grateful for where we are. We may not have achieved everything we desire to, but God has been gracious to us. I 
Pray that they become grateful people in life. Pray that they become grateful people. And I pray for patience in their lives. Let them not push themselves too hard over things that may take time to happen. Times are different. Seasons are different. My season is not somebody else's season. Our times are different. God has put our blessings in different junctions and different turning points. Some it will take a few years, some it will take more years. Some it will take months, for some it will take weeks. For some it will take days. Doesn't mean the one for whom it happened faster than the other is better than the other. No. Just means that God has set different times for us and we should be grateful and wait on God. And so I speak a blessing on their lives, oh God. Help their families, oh God. Some of them are in young families. Marriages sometimes can be challenging because two others are coming together to become one flesh. Getting to know one another, getting to discover certain things about one another they did not know during court. Pray for wisdom and grace and patience and love that covers a multitude of sins. I pray for those who are employed, they will show integrity, they will have priorities, focus, determination, and patience. You will help them to excel, climb the ladder. Bless those who are seeking for jobs. Bless those who are doing businesses over. Them. Increase the businesses they're doing, expand them. Increase their capital ability. Help them to expand, help them to be established, to grow. Pray for wisdom in whatever they're doing, and the right strategy, and the right position, that they may see the returns they expect. I pray for those who are um, seeking employment, the Lord, you grant them favor, open doors for them grant them good jobs. Let them be faithful to you, serving you with the resources as well. Lord God, you are our keeper. You are the one who blesses them. Let them not use their energies, but watch for them every day. We are living in a perverse and corrupt world. Keep your people protected and safe. Loving God, fear God, and doing what is right. Not only in the sight of God, but also in the sight of men. Thank you for the time you've had to share your word with me. I pray this word brings hope and strength and direction to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all for the opportunity to speak. God bless you. Look at me, thank you. That was, that was nice.
that's my first question. Then maybe that is this other thing that uh, who looks for who? Is it only a man who only looks for a wife, or can a lady also look for a husband? Uh -huh. the, the first one was, what do you look for? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Another question? In the text, the Is there any other? Uh, I want to see the like this one. Huh? So, 
In fact, when you tell a man I love you, he's not here with us. He's saying, I respect you and I honor you and I can't talk to you badly in public. I can't put a finger on your face when I'm addressing you. I can't dress my voice to you. And when you send me, I will go with pleasure. That's what he said. We don't have cards. I told my wife, I want you to go and make a card for me. Write it. I thank you for working hard for this family. And I truly respect you. You must respect to me. And put her there. It was like she was getting tetanus. It, it, it could easily come. Women are struggling to say that. Men want respect and they want love. That is that's that's what they need. Yeah. They need respect. Why in the man who is rich, dropping most his beds, staying in a mansion? Having billions, leave his wife in a nice cozy bed and go to sleep with a prostitute in a small corridor on a small safari bed. Yeah. What? Respect. There he's respected. Yeah. That's it. What, why are men mostly cheating in marriages? They're just looking for something. Do, am, am I encouraging it? No. I'm explaining a problem. So we can nip it at the back. And our sisters who've gone to school and are speaking too much English, do not know how to submit and respect a man. They say, I've got my money, I can treat myself. Are you oxygen that I can give you that to you? And go if you want. Nonsense. She gets in her car, she goes to the way she wants. As you see, that's what has broken society. That's why relationships are not working. So that's not for you. That's for those who are ready to get married. There are many things considered. Marriage is not emotion. Marriage is factual. Marriage is reality. So you have to sober up. If you want to take girls out for tea, take them out for tea. Because that's how you feel. But now when you want to marry, you wake up, clear your head, sober up, take right. Wake up. See beyond the beautiful nose and the nice hair and the masgumbe and the hips and the slit and the gap on the teeth. See beyond it. Because those things last for a few days in marriage. And the tongue talking in church. Ah, and the singing. Yes. <laughs> you saw what I went through in the hands of a powerful miracle working in the church. <laughs> so these things, this things take more. So far. You are not, you are not marrying a singer or a pastor or an advisor. You are marrying a woman. Not a girl. Not a baby. Not a baby. Not a shirt. You are not marrying a honey. You are marrying a woman. So, are you a priority? <laughs> Listen, do you know why when people married before they got saved and they get saved, we don't ask them if they knew it was the will of God? Why don't we ask them? Pastor, families got married, they met in a Changa day. The woman was the Changa seller. The man was the Changa drinker. They met somehow, they slept inside the Changa prayer. They got married. <laughs> Later on, they got saved, they church. You don't ask them. Are you sure it was the will of God? I've been there, I'm not there. So I'm in a better position to advise you. I say that therefore sisters should not be spiritual because whether you are spiritual or not, you're not gonna be a good man. Far be it from me. What I'm saying is those are added advantages that will add value to your relationship, but they are not number one. In Pakistan, they still have arranged marriages where parents choose for a boy, the girl he will marry, and they choose for the girl, the man who will marry her. Did, did I tell you in my second trip to Pakistan, I was given a, mm -hmm. a, a, a Pakistani girl? Yes. I did not tell you? You told me. Ah, yeah. Man, what am I going to say this one? <laughs> but the good thing with that, if you are single, you are lucky. Unfortunately, I was married. The good thing that is in Pakistan, the girl brings the wealth, the man provides the house. So when you have girls, you buy a big metal 
box. You start putting gold in it, silver, gold jewelry, and things that God accumulates. Well, you buy for her car. When the day that little box is full, she's ready for marriage. So the man simply gets a house, the lady brings the wife, well, she buys a car. She a doctor I prayed for and taught. Loved me so much in Pakistan. Started crying. He wrote a letter to me. In fact, one he wrote in Urdu, the language they speak in Pakistan. Another he wrote in English, offering to me his first daughter. Her metal box is full. I started offering to God. So I told her, I'm married. He said, yes, I understand, but this is my offering to you. I said, I can't carry this offering to you. My wife will kill me. I want to <laughs> So young men who want to marry, and you think you can preach well, and go through miracles, you can go to Pakistan. You may come up with a good Pakistani girl. With what? Marriage in our small. That was my prayer. So that's a surprise. So if I can just mention quickly a few things. There in the north I will send it to the pastor. So we mentioned it, it's get to my mind. It's gone before you marry. And uh, one of the things you need to consider. Um, first and foremost, spiritual maturity. Now, spiritual maturity is secondary to mental maturity. But why do we consider it most? Because you can get mental maturity in God's outside the church. That's right. Did you get me? Yeah. If I have mental maturity and spiritual maturity, which one do I call number one? Mental maturity. But if that is all I'm looking for, then I will not have to marry in church. I will have to marry in the world. So we put spiritual maturity. That is nice. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. So that we, we, we become clear on our target area. We are targeting Christians, not outside. So spiritual maturity is very important. Why is this important? It will help in the basis of your discussions. It will help in the basis of how, how you discuss things, how you plan things, how you, how you do things. You will be driven by the things of God. You will be driven by the word of God. But don't expect these things from the other if you are not also developing them in yourself. Spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is what Mary considered when she left Joseph and took the Holy Ghost. Mary had two men who wanted to make her pregnant. One is for Joseph and is for the Holy Spirit. They loved her at the same time. If she went to the Holy Spirit side, she would get pregnant and produce the fruit of the Spirit. If she went to the Joseph side, she would get pregnant and produce something with ears like Joseph's ears. If you get this one, you lose the other one. So you have to choose which one do you get first. So she chose to get the Holy Spirit first. And she became pregnant for the Spirit. And when Joseph was living, God brought Joseph back. So in that also you see priority. She chose to get the Spirit first. So if she could lose Joseph, the Spirit had the power to bring Joseph. But Joseph had no power to bring the Holy Ghost. If she could have lost the Holy Ghost for choosing Joseph, Joseph could not bring the Holy Ghost. But if she lost Joseph by getting the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost brought Joseph. That's how we set your premises. So spiritual maturity is important. You know, today we have got a new man we call Kuru. But let's consider spiritual maturity. It will help you with your self-control, a friend. The temptations of the flesh. Beautiful that's about me. You marry today, tomorrow you wake up, you see a more beautiful one than the one you married yesterday. You look at the girls in the line, you see more beautiful ones than the one you want to marry. Spiritual maturity produces self-control. The fruit of the spirit is supposed to tame you and cause you to walk within the corridors of Christ. Right. So consider that. It will help you with these last pleasures of life. It will keep you less corrupt in this world. It will help you live your life. Uh, for a lady, before you settle with a man, let him have something he's doing that brings money. 
Let's have a source of income. Don't get married to a man who lives by faith. <laughs> you can date a man who lives by faith. You can take tea with a man who lives by faith. You can take pictures and put on Facebook with a man who lives by faith. But when now you want to get married, tell him until your faith are what is it. Because children are not just raised by faith. Children are given milk and you buy diapers. And rent is paid and shoes are put. And when you marry, you don't know. You young men don't know. You buy one pocket of punga two kilos and you use it for a week for a month. When you marry, it will end in a month. Her neighbors come, her brothers come, her sisters come. Your, your sisters cannot really walk into your house because you're not married man. Relatives start coming to your house. You left for work to come home, you find your house is full. Say, ah, ah, what's going on here? Uh, uh, what's that? I said, ah, I'm sorry, I did not tell you. You know, my siblings told me they're in town. They were supposed to ah, it's my problem, my husband. They're here. They're already, what are you going to do? Cry. <laughs> you want to buy five kilos of meat for them to eat yeah. for two weeks before they yeah. eat. <laughs> When you marry relatives, just come. House just gets full. Ladies know how to make friends. They all of a sudden are a friend with the neighbor somewhere. They walk to you. They school with people just coming to your house. Uber just keeps going. Sugar just keeps running. Me just keeps running. Are you going to start to blame the whole What kind of happens? When food is depleted, buy more food. If you can't buy food, wait. Give yourself time. Your time is coming. A man should have some stable source, source of income. Yes, we encourage our sisters also to do something. Men have got this question, they ask ladies these days, what are you bringing on the table? Tell them, I'm bringing help. I'm coming in to help you. Count your money. <laughs> have some source of income. And sister, if a man used to wear black shoes and the black shoes are turning grey and you are dating him, you are a man girl. He can't buy shoes for the shirt, you are dating him. How will he make you a yeah. uh, What's wrong <laughs> Listen to me, love is not enough. Yes. And you know, I love him so much, I don't want to lose him. You are a man girl. You are following your heart, you left to the brakes long time ago behind the toilet. Bring your head along. Love is not enough. Man, the Lord just run on, I love you. Man, you're so practical, my friend. There are bills to pay, and the parties are being described. And love is not love. And there's school, and fees are rent, and there's car insurance, and the hospital rates, and people start getting sick. And you can't just be praying for the church every day. Take the church hospital. What's wrong with you? And to my faith, the baby is in woman with eh, 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 eh. That is your faith in yourself. Take the baby to hospital. <laughs> so have some source of income. And when you have some source of income, be transparent. Tell her, my sister, I make 2,000 per month. Trust the Lord. We will get a house of 200 shillings rent. Because the apostle says your rent should not be more than 10% of your income. Yes. I make 2,000, 10% is 200. We will get a call. Somewhere. We will be sleeping standing. Sleeping, standing. We'll be sleeping, standing. Stop talking big and you can't afford it. She gets carried away. She leaves a man who could have looked after her. She falls for you. And then you start mistreating her. She was not cut off for that. There are ladies who are cut off for sleeping, standing. The ladies who are not cut off for sleeping, standing. They want to sleep, sleep. And when it means and let me tell you, sleep. not every girl is your level. Get a girl of your level. <laughs> Don't get a girl of your level. I am one of my girls. What are you doing? Let me tell you about the way you are. You are talking about my wife. Come and be the Uji. You are trying to make a play on my Uji. That is it. Relax. Don't be crazy. Yeah, I need a man. You want to translate somebody's to the box of my hair, come on, come on, come on, come on. She's used to making her hair, spending chemicals on her hair every month. Where were the Martina Miambi? Now, here, where is the Miambi? Miambi, I'm going to go. Ah, what's wrong with you? When she's at the salon, she wants to take chips. She wants to eat whatever she eats. 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 
Wewe kwa mtaji ya mimi tangaza nywele kwa jina la Yesu. Ah. Na nywele inatengenezwa mara tatu. Ndio mimi fanyie. Hey. Na kama hakuna pesa kaza kutoka tatu tano sana size yako. Yeah. Nicheze naye hapo. Akuombe ni hilo. Na mtakuwa na swala na amani kwa kawaida. Mchezaji. Wote kwa kile utaweza. Unaweza hapo. Hakuna imani hapa. Hapa ni fact. Practical living. Hey. Yeah. Wanaomba kanyaga chini vizuri. I will not go to all of them because I have something else. Yeah. Thank you. The other question was Who should approach? Ah. Uh, after a little traveling across the globe, I've met certain cultures which have shocked me that only the white women they will sit down with you. I tell you, I tell you what, I like you. I want you to be my boyfriend. It is not our culture. Now I'm talking culture. I'm not talking spiritually now. It's not in our culture for the woman to chase a man. It is sweeter the other way around. Where the man is the hunter, the woman is hunted. But there are cultures where it is open. And then they can talk to a man and say, hey, John, will you consider being my boyfriend? And John says, hey, Mary, well, that's not a bad idea. I only find it a little awkward. Or I'm OK. I'm free for now. Maybe we can meet tomorrow and see where we start. In certain cultures, any side can initiate the conversation. In our culture, it's the man who initiates the conversation, because it's the man who is ready bring her in. Because in our culture, it, was, it is the man's responsibility to look after the woman. And Peter Akek is still old school. Peter Akek still believes that if the woman is making money, the man should feed the woman with his money, and the woman should spend her money the way she wants. Because there is something in Peter Akek that he does not want to be told, don't put your feet on the table because I bought the table. I want to put my feet on the table because I put the table. I want to jump on the bed. Men are also not. Sometimes you just want to come and run in and jump on the bed. And you're not okay. Like a talk that is You don't want to. You just want to jump on the bed. If it breaks, you put it. You can buy another one. You know, you want to bang the door. So you ah, okay, put the lock around the bed. I pay the rent. You see, a man needs his place yeah. to jump on bed, bang the door, put his legs on the table. But you can't do that if it's not your money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you buy something for a lady, she fits her. She goes to her friend and says, You see this blouse? Try it. Go to me. But when you buy from John, John will not tell people that you bought it. <laughs> and if you tell people, and John hears, shut your brain. Yeah, you will get back to shut. Yeah. I might have a little ghost law in a while. But 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 you see, so many things are changing in life today. Okay? And uh, while we have to be uh, able to change, and I don't resist that you change to the degree, you still have your dignity. Okay. So if the woman approaches you, you are okay with it, first of all, see you on the wedding day. The men ego. Hey. Is it true that women too would see handsome men at every level? There's a good man for a woman at every level. Yes. But not frequent. You know why? You people different from us. You love attachment. You know what it means to be attached? Men don't. That's why a man can have sex with you, but he doesn't love you. He hates you, but he's enjoying sex with you. You, you can't have sex with a man you don't like. A man can't have sex with emotions. You are emotional. Because to touch a woman's body 
you must touch her spirit authentically. To touch a man's spirit, you must touch his body authentically. Okay, I believe that. <laughs> Next, how do you deal with negative thoughts about marriage? Uh, this means that uh, you are not positive about marriage. You don't think something to consider, or look forward to. And this is caused by many reasons. But to make it short, this kind of person, we need uh, a little bit more of a fellowship, somebody, uh, counselor. Uh, so many things have happened in my life that are really discouraged many people. Uh, we are living in a society where uh, a broken family is a normal family, where a man stands and says, this is my family, and he's only introducing his children. And a woman stands and says, this is my family, and she's only introducing her children. And nobody asks about where is their father. And nobody asks the man where is their mother. Because society has come to accept that there's so much violence in life, you don't have to turn it as a woman by asking her, where is your husband? Or where is your wife? So much violence is happening. So much domestic violence, so much gender-based violence. So many people grow up in places where they were abused. They saw their father and mother fighting. Their father cut off their mother's hand. They saw terrible things happening. This is not just a state of their minds. I think that that does not take away uh, the sweetness and glory of marriage for the practice of marriage. It just means that because of what you've seen or have or experienced or the abuse you went through, the environment or whatever it was, it left you in a state that you abhor marriage. It no longer carries the excitement and charisma people associate it with. In fact, marriage is a sham, a scam. But I believe that uh, while bad things happen to people, it does not mean that good things don't happen as well. And aeroplanes crash into people every day, and we still fly every day. Matatus cause accidents every day, but then we still go to Matatus every day. Candidates fail exams, and then the same school next year, a new class is sitting for exams. Uh, the exam results of this year were cancelled, but they are coming to sitting next year because we tend not to put a blanket judgment on all of society based on isolated cases. Bad things could have happened that would have given you negative attitude towards marriage. It does not defeat the glory of marriage. Marriage is still glorious in the institution of God, and marriage still works. Yes, somebody else's did not have worked. Maybe your elder sisters did not work. Maybe your aunt did not work, or your mothers did not work. But yours will work because you, it is you in this case with a man and with good help, you can overcome this and look forward to marriage positive. It is not good for man to be alone. How to handle a child born of incest? Uh, I'm saying this in a low tone. Incest is common in this part of Kenya. Western Nyanza side has got serious cases of incest than any other part where people sleep also with the animals. What's it called? Bestiality. There are so many women happy to sleep with men for free when you suddenly climb a car. Certain things are just evil, I don't even understand them. They're just curses. When a child is born with incest, uh, traditionally and culturally, such a child should be killed, would be killed because how would the child call siblings that they are? In certain instances, they will be taken away out of that community and given to somebody else to adopt them. In the context of Christianity, sin has happened. Sin should not have happened. First of all, we should begin to be careful and say this thing should not happen in our time or to us. And I'm sure whoever asked it probably is asking it for somebody. This thing should not happen in the first place. It is a demon to develop sexual attraction to your system. But you see, you people watch too much movies. And you watch pornography. Or a step dad, or a step daughter, step sister, step brother. 
get off these things they're killing you they're defying you incest should not happen in the first place there are too many girls and too many boys who are too willing to have sex for free you don't have to jump on your sister or your mother. it's the demon which must be cast out but in the event that something like that has happened when a child is born first of all let me say that that case should be deemed dead to the case by case. But in a general context, you can't get the child. The child will be raised in one way or another. And I will allow the wisdom of the prevailing community to decide how, when they want to put that child. If the child is brought to me to decide where to put the child, I will give a decision. I will ask a, a, a family to adopt that child. So that that child becomes a member of uh, that family, related to them, but that family, that child is their child. The, the child can now call both of them that mom, that their siblings, because eventually this girl will get married there, and this one will get married there. They are siblings, they cannot get married. All right? So just for the child's peace of mind, that can be done. The child can be given for adoption to a family which is related to them, and have that family as the father. The child should not be mistreated. Some of these children turn out to be blessings. Because God has a way of just turning bad beginnings into good endings. How long should we date before we get married? Paul says, if it were my power, all of you will be as I am. Don't touch a woman. But because of sexual morality, I will advise that every man should have his wife. Paul says. So, coming back to that, and remembering what Solomon said, do not awaken love before now. So, how far can you two go before you tear each other's clothes and take it by force? It's a matter of self-control. In the instances where people are doing long-distance relationships, it is easy to go for years. Because you don't see each other. What's about that? We don't love you see you nana. So if she's out of the picture far, it's easy to exercise longer self-control. That is why majority will advise you, take care of the one kind of sick group, when I'm taka kind of sick group. Okay, one of us get down with me like in the levels. Now lose your money. Hmm, that's up to the mecca. It means you cannot go for long. You better do the things you need to do quickly. Get married. Even if you have to be grateful or something. Marriage is the only place where you have sex without sin. Anywhere else, sex is sin. So if you want to enjoy sex anytime, for breakfast, for lunch, after lunch, as you brush your teeth, when you're showing, if you want to have it anytime, anywhere, anyhow, without sin, get married. If you can wait longer, you must have very solid reasons. But and, 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 and let, let me now bring this thing to my mind. My friend, why do you talk to a girl only to tell her you will marry her after five years? What's wrong with you? If you're not ready, why, why are you disturbing her? Let her go to the, to the nearest person who can marry her next year or this year if she's ready. You, you are not ready, but you talk too much and then you lock her. So no man marries her, but you're not ready. You are selfish. The beauty is about let her go, you get another one. There's no point of locking a girl in a relationship for five years. You are not ready. Let her be. Let me tell you. When you want a girl, you talk to her. She says, no, no. Then you talk to her again. She says, no, no. Then talk to her again. And the day she says, yes, my friend, she's ready to be married in the evening. <laughs> She's ready to marry you. You are just wanting to be sure of my law. Then you might be dangerous. You are a witch doctor. <laughs> the girl has shown you she's ready. I'm a Eva, a Kotare, and a Kotaka. Then you tell her, uh, uh, you know, I'm still educating my younger brothers. So why did you bother me? And you get the finish, you can come talk to me. Functions. My friend, I don't. Some of these regions that tell me is because the man is not ready. 
Now, if you talk to the girl and the girl says, I'm not ready, I'm ready the next five years, my friend, let her go. Because the reason why you're talking to the girl is because you want to marry her. Very factual and very simple. Okay. Simple. I think if I lose the will of God, come on, keep me a break. I don't lose the will of God. I don't believe in this. Give me a break with that woman. She likes my brother. Let the girl go tell her, okay, sister, um, uh, you are ready now. I will bring the next five years. I'll let you be. It's like, do you know why you talk to a girl today and you're ready in the next five years? Your priorities are out of order. Are you saying that? You want to get married. This is marriage. And you're talking to a girl today. But this is where marriage is. You are not ready because you have not finished school, you don't have a job, you don't have money, so that you can marry. And you are talking to a girl today. You see, your priorities out of order. You are not ready. Leave her alone. She is not yours. Let her go. She will find a man who is ready. Who has got a job? Who has got money? Who is ready to settle down? That is his next priority to marry. Where the young woman and the town? Now, where the dad, you were hanging in there. You don't want to lose Joey because it was your childhood boyfriend. It's all so, right. I don't feel. I mean, what should we as the other people marry your childhood boyfriend, girlfriends? It happens. But it may not be for you. It may not be for you. So, if a girl is ready and you're not ready, let her be. But if it will take you two years to be ready, I think that one is waiting. Is there such a word? <laughs> that one can be waited for. Okay? But five years, my friend, and you're talking to the girl today. Uh-uh. We're going to get my family. 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 She's not a personal good person. And, and you may even make a good answer. All right? So, how long should you date? Well, how long can you wait? If you're ready, and he is ready, get married next month. Get married, get married over Christmas, get married next year. Get married after two years. If you're not ready, then you're not ready. If the two of you agree to wait, because we need a summer, we need a summer, we need a summer, we need a summer, when I'm on the phone, then I'm on the phone. Like, like that? Meet you, old man. I get to come to me. Then I'm on the phone, then I'm on the phone. I'm on the car, I'm on the number, I'm on the number, I'm on the viatch. I'm on the phone, I'm on the phone, I'm on the phone, I'm on the phone, I'm on the phone. Don't lock a man's daughter. If a man wants to talk to her, why are you talking to my girl? And you're not ready. You're ready to do this. Like you're not talking to why is someone talking to her? But you're not ready. My friend, you are you are a reason. You're bewitched that girl because. In the unlikely event, God forbid, that you tell her to do that and she waits for you faithfully. Then, after five years, then you see another girl in your new level. And now you are coming with stories to her. And you loved her in the days men wanted to marry her. What do you think will happen to her? How many times do you see one girl school with his sister? A father loses his daughter, whom he sacrificed to educate because of a stupid young man who loved her, promised her marriage, and now has seen a better opportunity. If I get you, I'll beat you up into fire. Useless young man. If a young man is not ready, leave the girl. If you're ready, talk to the girl. If you're not ready, she's not ready. You know what I plan a private? Priorities. Now you stand up here, I'll see the truth. Ever ready. I don't want to have a bunch of 
breakfast. I wash dishes for breakfast. You wash dishes for lunch. We are equally deserved. You stop doing that. You are interfering with divine, with divine order. God made the man and then he made the woman. The man was created first, then the woman. Man is the head. And the woman is not the neck. The woman is the body. So just take your place under the head. Relax. It is not being uh, oppressed. It is simply divine order. I teach these things to my daughters and I teach these things to the ladies. Because men enjoy treating ladies like ladies. But the moment you start talking about equality, we say, okay, fine, be a man then. Help yourself. If the bar is broken, don't call me. Get a stool, climb it, fix the bar. If the sink is leaking, don't tell me. Get down with a wrench and fix the sink. You see, you don't want to know that. You want us to do it and you feel nice. So let us be men and you be the lady. Let's stop this equality thing. It's not of God. Equality is not of God. And by the way, what a man can do, he cannot do. It's not true. A man can make a woman pregnant. A woman cannot make a woman pregnant. You, you can't do what we can do. So let's go easy on this thing. <laughs> wow. I wish out. I wish Kesha in the woman day. But there's no equality to that change what God has planned. I hope you've learned something. Uh, I, I want us to put a hold on that. That is from here. To be a pastor for my kids. Oh, what do you say? I don't want to think a lot. What do you say? Yes. You can say what? Yes. I'm changing for you, Godfrey. Push me to a boss and then you lost the session. Yes. I'm telling you. Thank you, Godfrey. Amen. My name is in the presentation. My first time around, I'm, I'm really blessed to be here. Apostle, we are very, very grateful for this opportunity. We learned a lot.